Broadway's my beat, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. When it's evening and the summer moon starts its circuit over Broadway, the mob scurries to its favorite cooling places. The bars fling wide their gates to let enter the kindly folk with thirst. The orange juice stand is oasis in the middle of concrete desert. Also to be noted, vision of Wiener, Bagel, and the waitress with a delicate air. And below all of it, subway islands where winds are blown down the tracks on a voice of steel that screams. And behind it, alley and handout of warm beer through the tear in the screen. New evening on Broadway. Have it. And at headquarters, last trip to water cooler on your homeward way out the door. The door is open for you. Two men, Dr. Sinsky and the man who protests. What'd you bring me in here for? For a chat. Consider it a privilege, Mr. Nelson, that you are in condition to chat. Uh, sit down. No, look. If a doctor wants you to sit, mister, he probably thinks it's a good idea. Okay, okay. Now what? It's a nice job of patching up, wouldn't you say so, Danny? Of course, you can't see most of the damage. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Nelson, Lieutenant Clover. Who worked you over, Mr. Nelson? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, here's the report that goes with him, Danny. Uh, Mr. Nelson was picked up draped over a garbage can in an alley back of Third Avenue. What's this mean, Dr. Sinsky? The handwriting or the terminology? Well, just read it to me, that's all. Everything. Yeah, I know. It all looks like a prescription. Uh, Mr. Nelson, it says here, has suffered a 10-inch gash which nicked the periosteum. Oh, come on. The rib casing. It caused either by a knife or glass or some sharp instrument. Uh, this, Mr. Nelson, here, this gentleman, I would say represents a still living example of attempted murder. Isn't that right, Mr. Nelson? I feel fine. He feels fine. Ever, never better. I can't remember an evening. You missing when... a ring, Mr. Nelson? Huh? On your left hand. Looks like you'd been wearing a ring, wouldn't you say so, Doctor? Yeah, yeah, I would. Were you robbed of it? Beaten, Mr. Nelson? Uh, over here on the report, here, it, it says he has his wallet with $63. So yeah, you... I see. Are well, you going to tell us what happened, Mr. Nelson? Then you can get out of here. Watch the man rise, then slap dust from his clothing and gently from the places of pain and shake the head at blood-spattered shirt, adjust the tie, assume the grin, and watch him leave. And with him, seepage of day into fall of night. And for the policeman, night break between violences. Time of end to day's work. Time of summer night. Time of invitation. You got nothing better, Danny. Pinochle, my house, Mrs. Sinsky will... And say no thanks to first invitation of night. Clear the desk, hit the street, drift with night current, till nighttime strands you against a doorway, which is where room is and summer sleep. Next morning, chain reaction. Waking, which begets hot coffee, to dissolve dreaming, which begets subway, which begets headquarters and office, and Detective Mugovan. Morning, Danny. Good morning. Sleep good? Mm-hmm. Ask me how I slept. Yeah, I'll do that. Not good. Mrs. and I tried to park for a while. Couldn't sleep. Uh, Mugovan. Back home, still couldn't sleep. Why I came in real early today, why I wandered around sticking my nose You got in. something, Mugovan? Just tell me, huh? I'm too beat to fence with you, Danny. Yeah, yeah, I got something. I think I got something. Because I nosed in on night watch reports. Because you got here real early. What? Well, that man Dr. Sinsky brought to you last night, that beat-up Mark Nelson, the still mouth. What about him? You know what he went and did after he left here? No. I didn't think you did. Uh, Mugovan, it... <laughs> Oh, you woke me, Danny. You really did. <sighs> All right, midnight. Mark Nelson shows up 205th Precinct, signs a robbery complaint against the Joan Parker. Go on. Nelson tells the precinct boys that Joan Parker was at a party at his house. When Joan left, the guests noticed there were things missing from their person, money and things. Nelson said he'd take care of it, said he knew where Joni hung out. Tommy's Bar, 18th and 3rd. And you know what? No. I said no, Markman. <laughs> precinct boy picked this Joni up. She was doing mirror sketches at Tony's Bar at the time. A precinct boy tucked her drawing finger in his palm, dragged her out of there, brought her back to the precinct where... Well, where what? 
Well, Mark Nelson cried a little, apologized to Joan, who cried a little. Then the complaint was dropped, and the precinct boys pushed them both out the door onto the street. Well, I got Nelson's address from Dr. Sinsky's report. Uh, you got the... Uh, I've been very keen this morning, Danny, yeah. Joan Parker, 1834 West 19. We'll have a nice ride, huh, Danny? Ride now the late morning street, dappled with sun and people. Street slowed down according to the heat and according to who's walking in front of you. Broadway, and leave it. Ride to the west, and the row houses turning ragged. Brownstone becoming tenement. Process hastened by heat chemistry, chalk, boys, disintegration of plaster and attitudes, girls, rust, and jaunty landlords. Address in middle of the block. Cast of characters in the vestibule. Joan Parker, apartment 1C. Try the door. Hmm. Danny? Yeah. Uh, anyone here? Let's go in, my dear. Hey, somebody really tried to mess this place up. Uh-huh. Hey, here, I'll take a look. Mm, blood. Take a look in that room there. Mm. Anything? Somebody left the water running. A lot of blood in the sink. Hey, you say you got Mark Nelson's address, Danny? Let's go talk to him. My husband isn't home, and I'm sure I don't understand what... Well, it's very simple, Mrs. Nelson. That you're of the police is a simple fact, easily understood. But that you're here in my home, in Mark's home, that becomes confusing. Well, just a few answers, Mrs. Nelson. About the party last night, for instance, about... How the... ridiculous. What? I said, and very plainly, how ridiculous. What is? Well, there was no party here last night, and no girl who robbed anyone. Mark and I have not had a party for months. Not, that is, where other people have been invited. You see... Go on, Miss Nelson. Well, I, I was afraid it would sound mawkish, but why should I be afraid, I asked myself. Mark and I are two people desperately in love. From the days of courting up until this very moment, 28 years of love and... You get along fine, you and Mark? You, uh, you won't laugh. No? It was written in heaven about Mark and me. And he's not home. Hasn't been all night. No. Where is he? Well, I, I don't know. He was not at home last night, nor this morning. And I'm weak with grief, I can tell you. This is not like Mark. Never like oh, Mark. Mrs. Nelson. But my Mark will explain. My husband... Mrs. Nelson. Will... Uh, yes? Last night, your husband was beaten, knifed. Mark? That happened to Mark? Why? Why? He wouldn't tell us who had done it or why. Then you know where he is, and he's hurt, and you must tell we me. We don't know where he is. We know this. Around midnight last night, he swore out a complaint against a girl he said had robbed his guests at a party. But so ridiculous. I've already told then you... Then the girl was brought in, and your husband apologized to her and dropped the complaint. Who was the girl? Earlier, your husband told me he had not been robbed, but his hand looked as if there'd been a ring on it. Oh, of course. His wedding ring. Like mine, see? Mark and I had a double ring ceremony, and I've never removed mine. And... And what? Oh. So confusing. Mark's came in the mail this morning, addressed to Mark. But we always open each other's mail. No secrets ever. May no... I see it, please? Of course. The the ring and the envelope it came in. Hmm. No return address. No. Who was the girl, Mark? Had... Uh, Joan Parker. You know her, Mrs. Nelson? Mark will tell me all about her when he gets home. All about her. Everything about her. All right. Uh, thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Nelson. Danny? Oh, what, my good? Call came in on the car radio. Just coming to get you. Homicide. Lexington in the 50th. Alley about three blocks away. Woman knifed. Dead. 
The throat of violence, the sound of death discovered and built into a mechanical device, the siren. Cover yourself with it and ride it. And three blocks away, slow the momentum for a right-hand turn into an alley where beginning crowd has sensed death and wants a look, an up-close look, and is annoyed that authority rides the squad car and so crowd must get out of the way. And violence is today a woman. Approximate age, difficult to determine because of facial expression. Approximate height, difficult to determine because of attitude of body. Stabbed twice. Both deep enough to cause death. Is that a pocketbook over there? Yeah. Here. Hmm. Anything? Wallet. What's the matter? Oh, take a look at her identification card, her name. Joan Parker. The girl Mark Nelson had arrested, the girl who had a wrecked room. Uh Uh-huh. And now we don't have to wonder why it was wrecked. Make you feel better, Danny? You are listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Americans, men and women from teenage up, you are urged to enroll for Ground Observer Corps service in your locality. You are needed immediately, and the job to be filled is an important one. Write or telephone your nearest Civil Defense Center, or write to Ground Observer Corps, Air Force, Washington, 25, D.C., That's your own Civil Defense Center or Ground Observer Corps, Air Force, Washington, 25, D.C. Afternoon sun hammers summer deep into Broadway's pavement, and the perfumes of the season lay in from the Catskills, where Mom is, and the kids... And from the island of Coney, where the uke is plucked and the portable radio hangs ripe on umbrella trees. And from the beaches of Far Rockaway, where later the night fires will keep the feet warm, and also the heart. And wish you were there. But content now, because a girl just walked by in strapless raiment, and the season dances round her languid walk. And her passing reflected in chrome and steel. And suddenly between you, big crowd and loss. So order the beer, skim off the longing. Summer, too, will finally pass. But Tartaglia, Sergeant Gino Tartaglia, will forever be with you. Through thick and thin. What? I said through thick and thin. I did something, Danny? Well, Gino... I stand here quietly. I observe how you gaze through yon window, and I know the turmoil of your feelings and the dangers you are facing on some forbidden shore. And I say, rely on me, Danny, through thick and thin. Thank you, Gino. How many years together now, Danny? I shouldn't ken your moods. You got something for me, Gino? Your secret adventurings. The twanger could take notes on... The who? The twanger, the two-fisted guitar-strumming adventurer whose books and whose exploits I have lent to you. Who could well take notes from you on exploits that are exploits. Not true to life, the twanger, huh? As of last night's book, My Colt is Hot, I Have Grown to Hate Him. He did something I won't mention. I'm sorry to hear that, Gino. Ah, well, twangers come, twangers go. To work, shall we, Danny? All right. The all-points bulletin you issued on Mark Nelson? Yeah? It is still papering the various precincts and patrol cars and the mats of beat walkers. And Mark Nelson is still footloose. Anything else? From Detective Mugovan on routine legwork. That the marriage of Mark and Helen Nelson was blessed 25 years ago with an offspring. A boy. Now 25. Name Richard Nelson. With a business of his own. And a place of his own. Which addresses I now tend you. Oh, thank you, Gino. I'm not finished. Oh. Well? Well, you said you weren't finished, Gino. Uh, pardon the loss of the thought. It's summer, Danny. <clears throat> From lab and technical, a report on the findings in the apartment of the deceased Joan Parker, which consists in the most part of gentlemen's watch fobs, keychains, fraternity pins, chevrons, both Army, Navy, and Marine, assorted cufflinks, also girls' jewelry of remnant sale type, also... Also what? that Joan Parker was a constant frequenter of Tommy's Bar on 3rd and 18th. You have a word for Mrs. T? Well, tell her you were splendid today, Gino. I shall, and thank you.
What's yours, mister? Oh, uh, hold that badge closer, huh? Uh, P-O-L... I-C-E. What's yours, mister? I'm looking for the owner. Me. You know a girl named Joan Parker? Uh, let me think. Uh, let me put it this way. Do you know a girl named Joan Parker? Georgia! Georgia, come here a minute. He's a cop, Georgia. He just asked me about a girl named Joan Parker. Just because a girl by that name gets found in an alley, he comes here and asks a question like that. At first, I tried to give him the impression that such a girl was a stranger to us. But now I think you better have a seat with a gentleman and talk to him. You want a beer, Georgia? You, mister? One beer. Joan Parker was a dear friend of mine. We used to date together often. I suppose that's because we had the same likes and dislikes. Thanks, Tommy. I don't like beer. It makes me fat. But I like the big glasses it's served in. To move it over the wet on the bar. All around. It's good for an afternoon mood. Joan was a nice girl. It was easy to be fond of her. She was easy to get along with. She had a habit of collecting things, mister. She collected things. There was a guy here. There was a guy here, mister. He resented the fact that Joni's collecting things. And we don't want any trouble here at all. Uh, I don't know the man's name. Do you know the man's name, Georgia? No. No, I don't. That's about it, mister. Is that what you wanted to know? Walk out of the place where summer ritual is a woman making beer scrawlings across moist of bar. Woman waiting, woman of prepared speech for any occasion. And the ride downtown now to gray building darkening under veil of twilight. Elevator ascent to 12th floor where office of Richard Nelson is. Richard Nelson, broker on glass pebble of door. And find it locked. And be called back by the elevator man and be scolded if you had bothered to ask could have saved you and him and the whole world a lot of trouble. Richard Nelson had gone home, closed up, gone home. So uptown again and to the apartment of Richard Nelson, broker, son of Mark and Helen Nelson, son of beaten man, of wanted man. What does a man have to believe in to finish a shower? Look, you, you Richard I... Nelson? I better be. For your sake, I wasn't. I could get very, very irritated. Who wants Richard Nelson? Police. You? Mm-hmm. Well, look. Yeah. Uh, you got a badge to keep you warm. Me, you mind I go wrapping a towel, something around the frame? No. Thanks, Evans. Uh... In a sec, kid. Oh, what with the blush and all, I don't remember. I asked you in, I thought the etiquette went, you stay. Forget it, I'm in. Yeah, you're in. And I got a very eager date waiting in a bar uptown, and her eager runs out when I'm late, so, uh, like that, huh? You know about your father. I know about my father. He's wanted for murder. It surprised me, too. The hidden power and secrets old dads carry in their bones. You know where he is? I knew, I think I'd tell you. Out of a pure filial emotion. Dads hasn't got the wind to keep running, shakes up his heart. Once he ran after me, it took 12 tears and three cold applications to bring him to Your him. father and mother... Now, what about moms and dads? They love each other very much. <laughs> they... <laughs> You're finagling around to that dame. He stuck in the pokey, then pulled right out again. The murder. Well, just dad. answer me uh, about your mother and... Uh, how they love? Now, don't laugh at me, son, but it was written in heaven about your father and me. <laughs> My mom said that. Like that, huh? They hate each other. Can't stand the sight of each other, and the honey flows out of their mouths like wine. They couldn't take it, so I beat it. Hey, look, my eager date, you used up yeah, minutes of it. Goodbye, son. Yes, what is it? Mrs. Nelson out here to see you, Danny. Oh, sure, right in, Gino. 
this way to see Danny Clover. Come right in, Mrs. Nelson. Where is my husband? Oh, please, won't you sit down? Where is he? What's happening here? I'd be glad to help Danny. No, that's all right, Gino. All I want to know is where he is. Don't you people have any Gino. feelings? Gino. But... Yes, sir, Lieutenant. Oh, Mrs. Nelson. If something's happened to him, please. We don't know where he is. I want you to help me. Listen to me. All right. I, I'm going to sit down like you asked me. And I'm going to control myself. I want you to help me do that. Now, just listen to what I have to say. It's been inside, and I have... What do you want to tell me, Mrs. Nelson? I don't know what Mark has done. We think he's... I won't listen to it. Whatever it is, just be gentle with him, so that when all of this is over and he comes back to me, I'll have his place all set, and I won't mention it. You're very fond of him, aren't you? When people ask me that, I always tell them that our marriage is made in heaven. You're very fortunate. And here we are together, Mark and I, at a crossroad. Somehow, Mark has been wicked. I know something. What? Tell me what you think he's done. You've changed your mind? So I'll know how to suffer with him. You mean you can do that by degrees, Mrs. Nelson? You don't have to be... I... I'll stick by him. I want you to know that. Whatever he's done... What is it, Gino? Out here, Lieutenant. It's important. Oh, pardon me, Miss Nelson. The most terrible thing you could think of, and I'd stick by him. They found him, Danny. Spotted him in a room near the East River docks. Muggerman's got the address. Waiting in a squad car downstairs. Thanks, Gino. Now you can go in and talk to her. Now I don't know what to say to her. Set, Muggerman? All set up, Danny. Stakeout's complete. Everybody's cleared out of the house except him. Okay, you in here. Hey, careful, Danny. He fired a Dennison through the door. Just take it easy, that's all. Nelson! This building... Don't be a fool! Saving the last bullet for myself. Listen, Nelson, you know me. I don't care who you are. Danny! What do you want, Wuggerman? Look what... Please, let me talk to him. Officer Curcio brought her here. She tried to crash a stake out. He's my husband. I have more right to him than you. What about it, Danny? I... I'm very calm. I know now Mark has done something enormously wrong. I want to talk to him. Let her come up. Where is he? Come on. Stand right here. Nelson! What do you want? Mark? Mark? It's Helen, your wife. Mark! Oh, hello, Mark. Put down that gun, Nelson. Do what he tells you, dear. Why did you have to bring her here and let her see me? Dear. The gun, Nelson. No. No. I haven't made up my mind yet what I'm going to do with it. And you can shoot me and kill me if you want. Is that my Mark talking like that? You don't know what's happened, Helen. I want to tell you something, Mark. What? Your wedding ring. Listen, You Helen. must have lost it or something. It came back today in the mail. Some kind person. Helen. Here. Here it is. And tonight we'll put my ring next to yours. Clover. What? Doesn't she know what's happened to me? She knows. She hasn't made up her mind whether to believe it or not. Listen, Helen. You put down that gun, you hear? Helen. Mm -hmm. I... You remember, sweetie? Sweetie. Get away. Mm -hmm. oh, hello. Drop that gun, Nels. Drop it. Oh. Just stay where you are. You remember. Helen. I met a girl. She teased me. She wanted to wear my wedding ring. It's all right. I tell you, it's all right. See? 
I have it. She wanted to wear it, else she said she wouldn't like me. Then she wouldn't give it back to me. I followed her to a bar. I had a fight with a man she was with. I fell and cut myself on a broken bottle. You come right home. And then home. they threw me in an alley. Later, I, I had the girl arrested so I could get close to her, so I could kill her. That was foolish. She sent the ring back. Do you know what I'm saying? I gave her my wedding ring. Don't you understand? Mark. What? I have to stop pretending now. Don't I? Really pretending. After 28 years of pretending. Helen. Helen. Helen! <laughs> Dawn reaches Broadway now, and the remnants of the night are driven back into the earth. You walk the street, and from behind the doorway, you hear the old sound, the sound of weeping. And you know the nighttime will never leave. It's found its hiding place. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway. My beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugovan. The program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. In tonight's story, Paula Winslow was heard as Helen and Jay Novello as Mark Nelson. Featured in the cast were Charlotte Lawrence, Clayton Post, and High Everback. George Walsh speaking. Later tonight, Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle, faces the wrath of a powerful enemy in a city gripped by fear. Also tonight on most of these same stations... Gangbusters brings us The Giveaway, Part 2. It's the story of the slickest jailbreak ever pulled off and what followed when police recovered from their surprise. Tonight on CBS Radio, hear Gangbusters and Tarzan for thrills of fact and of fiction. Sunday night's Dick Powell is rough, tough Richard Diamond, private detective on the CBS Radio Network.